Memory transcription subject. Governor Tava of the Venlo Republic. Date. Standardized human time. September 1st, 2136. My visit to the research outpost was intended to last half a day. At my request, Cho, my diplomatic advisor, had crafted a speech to show our solidarity with the UN. The whole afternoon was a joint ceremony in remembrance of the humans who sacrificed their lives in our defense. At the end of it, I would send off the predators who partook in our first civilian encounter. The volunteers of Doctors Without Borders and the Red Cross would board the initial outbound ship with their Venlo partners in tow. It was time for humans to receive a proper integration into our society, and that meant moving planetside. That was a less concerning prospect than it would have been before our experiments. There were zero reports of human on Venlo violence during the past ten days. Most of the complaints against the Terrans involved the predators trying to stroke our curly fur, which I found bewildering. That wasn't behavior I saw them exhibit with each other, so it couldn't be written off as a social custom. Parts a display of possessiveness, but overall, the trial of our species living together was a pleasant success. More so than any scientists predicted. The predators had an uncanny ability to bond with anything, and that allowed them to forge close connections within days. My mind defaulted to thinking of Noah and Sarah as part of my in-group at this point. I never could have imagined, when this all started, that I would look forward to seeing them as I did now. So they're alive. Do you think they'll have good news? Sarah asked. The ceremony had come to an abrupt halt when General Kam informed the UN delegation of the pressing development. A Federation shuttle barged into Venlil territory and raised a series of alarms. Its pilot claimed to be the missing patrolman Slunek. He kept repeating that his human companion needed medical attention in a hysterical voice. I would have kept it on the down law until we knew more, but Secretary General Meyer wanted everyone aware of the situation. He believed that if the change of plans wasn't explained, rumors would spread that the Axa were attacking. The UN leader's presence was unexpected. We had never met in person or spoken beyond video messages, but it seemed when Ambassador Noah told him of my plans, he wished to attend the memorial firsthand. Many humans flocked to the docking port as the news dispersed. Everyone on the station was eager to welcome the arrivals. The crowd numbered several hundred once Ven Lil were added to the count. Terran paramedics were on standby and the media were swarming to report any developments. I knew why the Predators wanted to see the state of the captives. They were trying to decide if the Federation was an enemy. In the wake of my shocking admission, they wanted to know if coexistence was even possible. This was a good sign if the Federation military was civilized enough to hear a Predator out and set it free. I'm hopeful, guys. I swished my tail reassuringly. If the Federation let your Marcel fellow go, maybe I was wrong. Maybe they can see you for the sensitive and wonderful species you really are. I greenlit the plan for a preemptive strike days ago. Maya's voice was slow and grovelly, flowing with a practiced cadence. The General suggested that we needed to hit the key gadget launch points. I have no way of recalling our bombers, even if I wanted to. Damn it all! Noah cursed. I knew we were too hasty. The Federation will see this as an unprovoked attack. We're going to ruin all chances of peace. I patted the ambassador on the shoulder, hoping to quell his emotions. His brown eyes softened and he gave me an appreciative nod. There was no sense in lamenting what was already set in stone. All we could do now was address the consequences together. Proximity alarms shrieked as our sensors detected an unknown vessel within bombing range. The UN general switched them off and granted permission for the inbound ship to dock. A few Terran soldiers lingered near their officers with assault rifles in case of a trap. Their paranoia and suspicion had soared to new heights since they learned the galaxy wanted to kill them. I didn't have the heart to tell them that such deception was a prejudice tactic. Playing at empathy would never be the Federation's modus operandi. The exterior airlock creaked open and the Federation shuttle descended from the inky backdrop. It followed the station's landing beacon to glide through the opening and mounted its footings into the docking port with surgical precision. The craft wasn't big enough to fit more than four individuals, and that was if they stacked on top of each other. The soldiers relaxed, satisfied that an ambush force was ruled out. It only took a few seconds for the port to repressurize, but I could sense the humans' restlessness. Anxious murmurs cycled through the crowd, waiting on the cusp of certainty, feel the darker side of their imagination. The partition between the reception area and the dock receded once the sensors determined it was safe. A silver grey Van Lil poked his head from the spacecraft, which drew a few cheers from our people. A bandage wound its way around his ears, tying down the long black tuft of hair on his forehead. The wrappings were soaked through with rich orange fluid. That fresh bleeding suggested he needed medical attention himself. The human paramedics exchanged looks as there was no sign of their man. They showed that their way past the Van Lil. I could only see their backs, but they seemed to stiffen as they laid eyes on the interior. What had they seen that we had not? How severe were the humans' injuries? The predators tortured a stretcher inside and summoned the gurney to work by the ship. 
Loud calls thundered above the chatter to clear a path. That meant Marcel was alive, but I had to wonder why he couldn't walk out under his own power. It also raised the question of how he incurred such a condition in the first place. Sara pressed a hand to her mouth. My God, what have they done? I... I am more grateful to you than ever, Tava. Noah breathed, shaken to the core. I should have never questioned your decision. I see now what you've saved us from. Similar cries erupted from the onlookers as the paramedics emerged with the captured human. Marcel's malnourishment was apparent at first glance. His skin hugged his bones tightly and his stomach was a flat depression beneath his ribcage. I wasn't sure if it was the starvation or the vicious injuries that caused his breathing to sound so strained. The poor guy's face was mashed to a pulp, bruised and blooded. Whoever beat the human seemed to take particular offense to his binocular eyes, the way the sockets were turning black made my stomach flip. A metal band was fitted to his neck, and the skin beneath was marred with minor burns. Why was that choker still on him? Nobody had taken it off. The Ven Lil almost seemed more incensed than the humans. The thought of the Federation doing that to their body sparked a predatory rage. My own blood boiled at such a grave injustice. Noah was right. That would have been him if I allowed it. I was wavering on whether I wanted the humans to show mercy to my old friends after all. Stop filming this, I hissed at our media personnel. Show some respect. Maya crossed his arms. No, film it. On the condition that you'll show it everywhere. I want everyone to see this, to document how the Federation treated one of ours. When we declare war on these bastards, I don't want anyone saying it's for no reason. Whoa, hold up. If they realize their mistake and let him go, Noah whispered. Maybe they're sorry and wish to make amends. They didn't realize anything. Slanich horizontal pupils snapped to orders as he overheard the ambassador's comment. The captain was going to kill Marcel, and they're still planning to bomb Earth. What stopped them from killing him? Did you talk them down? I asked in a soft voice. I tried, Governor, but they wouldn't listen. We escaped by the skin of our teeth because of the first officer every cell. He incapacitated the captain and escorted us off the ship. The Secretary General frowned. What happened to this Rissell? I brought him with us, sir. He's on the ship. I can't get him to come out. This isn't... Uh, exactly what I promised him. My ears swiveled toward the shuttle. I thought I could detect the sound of terrified whines amidst the commotion. Maya looked like he wanted to retrieve the first officer himself and was about to start in that direction. Though the grey-haired human didn't exude hostility, I feared he might escalate Rissell's emotions to a blinding panic. Let me handle this, I said to the humans. Noah, Sara, you remember how hard it was for us? And there were only two of you. Maya glanced at the astronauts and fell back as their nods affirmed my words. I ducked into the spacecraft to look around. Huddled beneath the pilot's chair was a Colchian male with a dark blanket over his head. It was a pitiful attempt at camouflage. It would be amusing at a brighter time. The movement of the fabric and the outline of his form were obvious giveaways. I imagined the human paramedics noticed Rousseau, but were too preoccupied with Marcel to coax him out. Within closer range, the whines sounded more like muffled screams. I clicked my claws on the floor so Rousseau would know the approaching person wasn't a human. The officer peeked out from under his tarp. His bulbous orange eyes lit up with recognition. Go for the tarver! Rousseau exclaimed. You're... alive? Of course I'm alive. What made you think I wasn't? It's just... uh... Nobody has actually seen you in months. And the station is infested with predators. I saw them through the window, lurking, waiting. It's not infested. And they have good reason to... lurk. They were curious and worried. And now they're rather upset. Hell, I'm upset too. Oh, please help me, Tarver. This is a nightmare and I've done it to myself. I just want to wake up, you know? Kick me out of fear. Please. Calm down. Everything is all right now. Tell me, what is it that the humans are doing that's bothering you? Slonik said there were just a, a couple. Tell me, two or three I could tolerate, but looking at all those predators, pure agony, feels like my chest is on fire. I don't know how you bear it. I know exactly how you feel. It will pass. You can't know that. But I do. How about I introduce you to my first human friend? Just one of them. Just, just one. Just one. One? Rousseau whined, rocking back and forth. <sighs> okay. J just one. The caution was clearly on the brink of a nervous breakdown, but I decided to move forward with that tepid affirmation. 
This guy defied a superior officer and sacrificed his career to save a human. That wasn't a risk that someone took without good reason. There had to be some part of Rissell that already accepted the Predator's true nature. It was a matter of getting through to him, of bringing his logical mind back into the equation. Whether it was reason or empathy that struck home, it didn't make a difference. Noah? Come here, I called. The male astronaut hurried in, rushing to my side. Is everything all right? What's going on, Tarver? Hmm. The first time I saw Noah, I thought he was feral. Can you imagine answering that hail? I waved a paw in the human's direction, and Rissell shuddered. All of his teeth are showing, and those murderous eyes looked like there was something out of a nightmare. He looked like the meanest, nastiest creature in the universe. The ambassador sighed. Ah, Governor. You always flatter me. Shush, I'm getting to the important part, I huffed. But anyhow, the human's words were about peace. There was such a disparity between that appearance and the things they said, my brain couldn't reconcile it. I'm just saying, Tarver, you could fake the occasional compliment. Noah shot me a coy smile. I had been around the predators too long if I could differentiate snarls, hadn't I? Talk about my winning personality. My exquisite physique. Pretend you liked me. I do like you. Stop fishing. At any rate, there was this collection of little things the humans did that made me think. Maybe. The opt out. But looking at them dredged up all my worst memories, so I shut out that voice. I wanted them gone. Then why did you stop Sovelin from k getting rid of them? What happened? Rissell stammered. I teared up, just a little, and the first thing Noah did was try to comfort me. I realized that I never gave him a chance. No unfeeling creature would pick up on emotional nuances like they do. That's when I knew. When did it click for you? It's... he. The instant Slanik showed signs of distress. Marcel tried to protect him. It was something he said that he only cared for the Vendel's safety. The Kolshian's eyes became distant, as though he was reliving the moment. Even when the captain had a gun against his head, the Predator was trying to soothe his friend. And I believed him, if just for a moment. You sensed it then, Rousseau. You know that nobody could fake it that perfectly. I know, but I feel... Forget about the feel. You're going to walk out of here with me and Noah. We'll find you a room, and I want you to rest up. And then? Then we're going to determine who is responsible for what happened to Marcel. The humans will decide what to do about it. It's your decision, but I'd like you to speak to them. You represent the Federation, as far as we're concerned. Noah nodded. As would I. We don't have to be enemies. Rissell rose to unstable legs and dusted himself off. Vos' first steps into the open were tentative and frightful. He called his tail around mine for support. Venturing out through the sea of humans, many of whom were openly staring, must have been a daunting task, but he managed to hold back the scream which I sensed building in his chest. The officer lowered his gaze to the floor and marched ahead through the chemical fever. Perhaps this man was a spark of hope that not everyone would write humanity off on sight. I prayed that Earth could find other friends in the galaxy, and that our newfound ally would find the courage to prove that it was a possibility.